Some of us would like to read the Bible as if it were just a list of statements. I used to read the Bible like that. Just a list of of truths and propositions and a list of do's and don'ts. So if you believe all of these things and you do these things and you don't do these things, then you're a Christian, you got God's message, and, and you're all set. But it's not that simple. It's not that simple. It's not just a list of do's and don'ts. It's not just a list of things that you have to believe. Now, the Bible does state truths. It does give commands. But overall, it's about a person. It's about a person. So when Jesus grabs the scripture out of that person's hands and says, these are the scriptures that talk about me. He says, if you believe what Moses wrote, you believe me because he wrote about me. These aren't just a list of commands. These aren't just a list of truths. This is about a person. This is about me. And the whole Bible is that way. It's not just, a, it's not just an encyclopedia of, of truths or do's and don'ts, although it has truths in them, it has commands. But it's more than that. It's more than that. If you have your Bibles open, look at verse 46. If you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. If you believed Moses, you'd believe me. He wrote about me. Everything Moses wrote was all about Jesus Christ, really. Everything that Moses wrote. Moses is supposed to have written Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Sometimes it's just referred to as the law, the Torah. That's what Moses wrote. And if you read it, some of it is the driest parts of the, the whole Bible. You know, it's just a bunch of lists of how you're supposed to do sacrifices and how you're supposed to sprinkle the blood on the altar and all of these kinds of things. It's like the second part of Exodus and some of those parts of Leviticus. That's, that's some really dry reading there. It's really hard to get through that. And Jesus says, Moses was writing about me. These aren't just rules. This is about me. So everything Moses wrote was all about Jesus Christ, a a person, a human being. Verse 39. You diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Scriptures are not a ten steps to salvation plan, but a picture of the person of God. Scriptures are not just a self-help book, you know, where you can help yourself. Scriptures actually say that you can help yourself. You need God to help you. We can't save ourselves. You need the Spirit. So this is not a 10 steps to salvation plan. This is a picture of who God is as a human, not a, God is not a human being, Jesus is a human being, but who God is as a person. God, God's a person. He's not a principle. He's not a mathematical formula. He's not just some sort of force in the sky He's a person. He's, he has thoughts. He has feelings. He has hopes and dreams. He has things that he likes, things that he doesn't like. Verse 38. Nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one he sent. So these people that Jesus was talking to, They don't have the message because they don't believe the person. Now, when Jesus was talking to those people, those were the people who knew the Bible the best. And he's telling them, you don't know the scriptures. Telling the people who know the Bible the best out of the whole crowd, right? You don't know the scriptures. That was pretty surprising to them. You don't know it. I mean, 
sure you can you know what the words are and what it says, but but it's like it's not in here. You might be able to fill out a an exam pretty well and get an A on it, but you don't know it. I mean, how many of us have have uh, studied something and then got an A on a test and then immediately forgot everything that we put down on that test? On paper, we know it. But do we really know it? No. We know enough to get the A. So God is not a list of truths or do's and don'ts. He's a person. God is a person. I think we forget that a lot. Or at least I, can, I forget that sometimes. God's a person. God's not a list of rules to follow. He's not a force. This isn't Star Wars. God is a person. And when He made us in His image, He made us into persons. People who have joys and sufferings. We have hopes and dreams. We relate and connect with one another. God is a person. And because God is a person, there are truths that go along with that. And there are things that God likes, and there are things that He doesn't like. So if you love God, you'll want to do the stuff that He likes. You won't want to make Him mad. So, for example, if, uh, if you're married, or if you just have people that you live with, after a while you start to realize, hey, they don't really like it when I use this word, or when I listen to this kind of music, or this kind of thing. If I, if I made something for dinner, and it turns out Deirdre hates that, then that's not very nice. I have, uh, I have two volunteers to uh, help illustrate some things. So can I have my two volunteers come forward now, please? Why don't you stand right here? Okay. We have two different people here, and they have some things in common. <clears throat> They're both named Hannah. Okay, they're both named Hannah. They're uh, both high school sophomores. They're both in my Sunday school class. They both go to this church. They're both kind of goofy. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 both very talkative too. They're, they're the ones who they probably uh, the two of them probably account for about eighty percent of the conversation in any given Sunday school class. But which which is good. I'm not 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 complaining about that at all. Okay, now. But there's some things that are different about them. If I, if I know anything about them, I'm going to know what they like and what they don't like. I'm going to know what's going to annoy them and what's not going to annoy them. So, for example, um, I, have, I have two, two CDs here. Now, I know Hannah Woodwike here that she really likes Coldplay. This is her, her favorite her favorite kind of music. So, as a present, I'm going to give Hannah this Coldplay CD. <laughs> okay, she doesn't like that. How, how about this, this country music CD? You'd rather take that one. Okay, sure. Okay, so, there, <laughs> if I give her a Coldplay CD, she doesn't like that. This Hannah likes that. Okay. Um... There's different things that do these different Hannahs know, too. One of them is uh, studying AP government. The other one is studying AP history. And so, I have a couple questions. Hannah Woodwike, how does the Fifth Amendment limit the government's power? What's the Fifth Amendment? <laughs> What's the Fifth Amendment again? Okay, so this Hannah Woodwike, she doesn't, she doesn't know what the Fifth Amendment is. Hannah Miedema, what's the Fifth Amendment? The Fifth Amendment is like the right 
to remain silent or to not self um, just discriminate or like incriminate? It's self incriminate. Okay. So the Fifth Amendment is, you know, when you plead the fifth, you know, I refuse to to answer on the grounds that may incriminate me. How does that limit the government's power? Um, well, it's part of it's connected to the Miranda rights, and if they don't read you those, then you can, anything that you say or stuff can be thrown out of the court because it's a legal Oh, okay. So even if you do say some things that incriminate yourself, if your rights were not read to you, then that could get thrown out of court and that can't be held against you. That limits the government's, government's power. Okay, very good. Um, but Hannah Amidema, could you tell me the name of the French commander who went to George Washington and his cabinet to ask for help in the French Revolution? Nope. You can't. <laughs> How about Hannah Woodwike? It's Janae. Janae. Uh, okay, that's French. How do you spell that? <laughs> okay, all right. What was the answer? Janae. No, I meant, I, meant, I meant what was the answer that... Uh, that um, uh, the United States gave, gave them. We, did, we said no. We said, go fight your own war. It's all right. Okay. Now, one more thing. I know one of these Hannahs likes to get hugs. The other one doesn't. <laughs> now, I think Hannah Woodwike likes to get a hug. Because I know I like hugs. So if I like hugs, then, then Hannah must like hugs, right? That's, that's the logic I'm going to go for. So I'm going to give Hannah Woodwike a hug. No, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So certain people, different depending on who you are, you like certain things. You don't like other things. And if you know the person, you can do the things they like. And if you don't know the person very well, you can kind of make them uncomfortable. Right? Don't take that the wrong way? All right. If you were with us in Brookport, you would know what that means. Anyways, you can head back to your seats. Thank you very much. Sure, I'll take that back. (laughs) She already has a copy. It's about persons. God, God is a person. This Bible tells us what He likes and what He doesn't like. This tells us how we can love Him and what He doesn't like. We don't want to make Him mad. We don't want to do things that irritate Him. It tells us about a person. Look at the uh, screen here with me, if you would. How does God want us to pray so that He will listen to us? First, we must pray from the heart so that no other than the one true God who has revealed himself in his word, asking for everything he has commanded us to ask for. Second, we must acknowledge our need and misery, hiding nothing, and humble ourselves in his majestic presence. Third, we must rest on this unshakable foundation Even though we do not deserve it, God will surely listen to our prayer because of Christ our Lord. That is what He promised us in His Word. The key part here, we must pray from the heart to the only true God who has revealed Himself in His Word. Now, we have to pray to the God who revealed Himself in His Word, not the God that we have in our own imaginations. The God, God in our imaginations, that, that God can kind of take on our own characteristics. We can make God in our own image, but we need to pray to the God that has revealed himself to us here. If you believe Moses, then you'd believe me, because Moses wrote about me, Jesus said. Now, just a little bit of clarifying some things, in case uh, this, is, this is a Theology 101 here. There's one God, there's three persons. Okay? There is one God and there's three persons. A Father, a Son, and a Holy Spirit. Okay? Many of you probably knew that. But sometimes when we say God, 
Sometimes we're referring to just the Father. Sometimes we're referring to all three of them together. So sometimes that can get confusing. I wanted to just straighten that out because this is one of the cornerstone Christian beliefs here. One God, three persons. If you have your Bible, look at verse 37 where it says, The Father who has sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice nor seen his form. The Father, he's kind of, he's kind of mysterious. He's, he's without form. In John, earlier on, in the first chapter, it says no one has ever seen God at all. Not ever. But the Son is the one who's made him known. So the Father is beyond us in every way. If there were no Son, if there were no Holy Spirit, we would have no idea who the Father is. We, because God is transcendent, we, we don't have words that can even describe who God is. It's only by the Son and the Spirit that we even have anything that can describe God at all. Nobody has ever seen the Father. Now, there's one God in three persons. The Father, Son, and Spirit are all one, meaning they are on the same page. They are one, in theological terms, they are one in essence. So, if I'm debating with a Jehovah's Witness, one thing that I will ask is, it says that Jesus is the Son of God. And they will agree with that. And so I say, okay, I'm, I'm the son of, of my parents. Now, that means that I'm the same, the same thing as they are. I mean, I'm not, I'm not less human than they are. I, you know, you beget humans. Humans beget humans. Rabbits beget rabbits. Armadillos beget armadillos. Right? If... I am the son of my parents, then I'm just as much human as they are. If Jesus is the son of God, then he is just as much God as his father. Right? And that's where, that's where they'll, they'll trail off. Because for them, Jesus is a creature. But if it says the son of God, then that means we're the same thing. Maybe, maybe my parents are older and wiser. Maybe I have to respect their authority, but we're the same thing. We're the same kind of, kind of being. We're the same essence. So the Father, Son, and Spirit, they're all one. And that's why Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because we're one. Now verse 43 I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. God the Son came in Jesus Christ by the Spirit's power so that we would know who the real God is. It's through Jesus Christ that we know who the real God is. We don't, we don't know the Father outside of the Son. The Father is nebulous, beyond us, confusing, beyond our thoughts in every way. Unintelligible to us. But we have the Son, and He said, this is who the Father is. This is what He likes. This is what He doesn't like. This is what He wants. This is what He expects. This is what He expects from you. And so, the entire Bible, the entire Bible, is God revealing Himself by His Son, through His Spirit. The whole Bible is God revealing Himself. And the, the small words here are important. By His Son, through His Spirit. The Son is called the Word of God. The Spirit is the breath of God. So it's as if God were speaking words through the breath of the Spirit. Verses 39 and 40. You diligently study the Scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the Scriptures that testify about me. Yet, 
you refused to come to me to have life. The Bible actually, if anything, is more an autobiography than a cookbook or a textbook. It's more like an autobiography. God has written the story of himself as he has related to people throughout history. This is God's autobiography. This isn't a textbook. It would be really convenient if the Bible came to us in the form of a catechism, but it's more of an autobiography, and it reveals a person. And there's truths that go along with that person, but fundamentally, this is about a person. Pharisees and scribes and teachers of the law, they read the Bible like a do-it-yourself manual of pleasing God. But when God was standing right in front of them, they didn't recognize him. In fact, they not only didn't recognize him, they rejected him and they sentenced him to death. Truths are in the Bible so that we worship the true God. So there is truth in the Bible, for sure. We can't minimize that. We can't pretend like that's not true. There's truth in the Bible because we need to worship the true God, not the God of our imaginations, not the God that's convenient for us, the real God. One of the sermons coming up here is uh, titled, Be Offended. In other words, there's going to be some things about God that we're not going to like that much, that might kind of rub us the wrong way and be like, wait a minute, I don't really like God to be like that. But maybe we need to listen to that and just accept God for who he is instead of what we would want him to be. Doctrines, that's kind of maybe a cold, kind of boring word in some minds. Doctrines are actually descriptions of who God actually is. So, just like one of these Hannah's liked hugs and the other one didn't. Doctrines are descriptions of what the real God is like. Human minds are idol factories and we are making our own versions of the true God all the time. If we're not in the Word, then we will end up with some version of God that is convenient for us. A God who likes what we like and wants what we want and wants us to be happy, healthy, wealthy, rich, famous, and all this kind of stuff. And it sneaks up on you really quick. So just because I think Hannah Woodwike wants a hug, that doesn't mean that she actually does. I have to actually pay attention to her in order to realize that she doesn't want a hug. She had to run away from me, you notice. <laughs> she really didn't want a hug. I might think that God wants me to be happy, healthy, wealthy, rich, famous, and all of this kind of stuff, but does that mean God actually wants me to be those things? No. We need the Bible so that we're worshiping the God that's in heaven, the real God, not the God in our imagination, not the God of our minds. And the commands of God are what help us love and serve him. And so we sometimes see commands as, okay, these are a list of rules to follow. Well, I mean, you can look at them that way, but really... What it is, it's, do you, want to make, do you want to please God? Or could you care less about what he thinks? If you actually care about God, you're going to want to do what makes him happy. I mean, that's the way we treat one another. If you love your friend, if you love your family, if you love anyone, then you're going to want to do what is best for them, what they want, what they need. Not what you think they need not what you want them to be, that's when problems start. So we are not jumping through hoops to get to heaven. 
This is not jumping through hoops to get to heaven. In fact, we're showing love and thankfulness to a person who's already saved us. We don't do good things. We don't show God's love because God's holding hell over our heads and he says, you're going to go there unless you do what I tell you to do. That's not how it works. God's already saved us. He's already shown his love to us. And we want to show that love in kind. This, this God's love is so impressive to us that we want to share it. We want to spread it. And so just one last thing to leave you with. Let's read the Bible. Let's stay in the Word to better know and understand God the person. God the person. So that we can please Him and serve Him and live for Him and show love to Him like He's shown love to us. God the person. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Dear God in heaven, thank you for this day. And Lord, thank you for being a God who is good and loving and saving towards us. And we pray, Lord, that we would love you as you deserve, as you've revealed yourself to us. That when we pick up our Bible, that we would see you, the person. That, Lord, we would not just seek you out just so that we can get our ticket to heaven, but Lord, so that we can love you as you have loved us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.